Yeah, sorry about that. The battery died, so I had to get the plug and plug it in and charge it. So I had to basically get my charger for it. But like I said, you know, um, to, to, to me, you know, like I said, when Moby is 25 years later, I'm a big fan. I, I think you just need to reread a end game and get look at it from a different perspective. Look at it from outside the box. Because like I was telling you, at this time, originally, if you look and Google it, and you can find out history. You can ask anybody here on DeviantArt, you can ask anybody at several Sonic web fan sites. Ken Pender's original plan for this story, for Endgame, was to kill off Princess Sally. This was supposed to be it. She was supposed to die. She was supposed to die because the king, her father, was coming back into power, so basically there was no necessary need for her. It's like, where is she going to fit in the story as a princess who has some say, who has some control? You know, basically has the final say. Is the main monarch, the main person in charge. You know, what, what role is she going to be able to play besides just being the love interest for Sonic and maybe just being a freedom fighter? She wouldn't really have no role. She wouldn't have no necessary role as a princess if her father's back in power. And again, that's originally what was supposed to happen. She was supposed to die in the miniseries. And the aftermath was uh, the Sally that got revived at the end by Sonic was going to be a robotic Sally, an animatronic, one last torture device, if you will, one last, you know, you know, one, yeah, one last torture device, one last kind of like reign of terror or evil against Sonic from Robotnik, even from beyond the grave. Why do you think they have an issue a couple of issues later before he and Tails go around the world and chase after Nagus? Why do you think they have a story where Sonic puts on this helmet and it's like he's in another world, another dimension, and everybody in this dimension ends up turning out to be nothing more than robotic and roboticized and all that. And, and the helmet looks like it's about to explode, be trapped. It, it, it's about, and the, it looks like the helmet's about to blow up on Sonic because he's wearing it. Why do you think that happened? Because that, to me, was the alternative, the alternate, the plan B, if you will, the backup plan, because Ian Flynn couldn't go with what he was, not Ian Flynn, but, but Ken Penders, and I didn't mean anything by that, it just came, up, just came out that way, because I'm used to reading Ian's stories as well now, so I apologize for that. Uh, but basically, Ken had to come up with that alternative to because he couldn't do what he was originally going to do. And like I said, ironically, I find it funny that they did this at a time when in 97 they had several Sega World indoor theme parks, the biggest being in Sydney, Australia. And there, in the Sydney, Australia one, they had a live stage show called Sonic in Sydney Live, starring Sonic, starring Tails, starring Sally and, and Robotnik. Yeah, Sally was one of the main protagonists. And another reason they did it was because they wanted to make money off merchandise. Uh, uh, for mer they wanted to make some money off potentially some merchandise surrounded by her, uh, that revolved around her. And that merchandise obviously came from the Sega world in Sydney, Australia. So, that's just a little bit of backstory, Mix Fan, if you want to know why Endgame is the way it is. And they do have a, if you look online, if you go to comic book shops online, like milehighcomics.com, maybe midtowncomics.com, heck, even go to archiecomics.com themselves, you can actually find Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog issue 50, Director's Cut. You can find it there. You can go online on the Archie app, maybe find it there. You can go online to places like TailsKickass.net, if you will, and you can find a CBR file with it, click on it, and read it. And you'll see exactly what he was originally planning to do. I mean, they had to base... You want to know how big Endgame was originally supposed to be? 
how big and different it was originally supposed to be. They had to do a separate side story in one of their issues of specials. I think the special was Return of the King, one of the original Sonic Super Specials. That they had to do a side issue, a side story in there, based around how Bunny and Antoine escaped from the Down Under. And that had to be rewritten and redrawn into the director's cut. So again, I know you have your difference of opinion, Mix fan, and it's fine, you're entitled to it. But all I'm saying as a fellow fan and someone that respects what you've done on Demon Art as the media man and as yourself, and someone that also respects the fact that you <laughs> lashed out on certain issues like 134, which deservedly, which really deserved it in my opinion, I think you need to give Endgame, stories like Endgame and Mobius 25 years later, just one more look from outside the box, from a different perspective. Heck, if you want to be in a fan of being Flynn's work, let's take a look at it this way. And I'm not saying this in a negative light, in a negative way. But think of them as stories that were written during the Ian Flynn run by somebody else. Okay? I'm just saying. So, anyway, though, folks, that is a mixed fan, not media man, but mixed fans' uh, top ten least favorite so Archie Sonic comic books. I mean, comic stories. And again, those least favorites are number 10. If I can get back to it. Number 10, Pirate Plunder Panic from Sonic Universe. Number 9, Shadows Fall. Number 8, The Tales Miniseries. Number seven, Mobius 25 years later. Number six, Line of Succession. Number five, Twice Told Tales. Number four, Birthright. Number three, Hero to Zero and Chaos Emeralds are forever. The 150 to, is the 150 is anniversary issue that leads into 151. Number two, tossed in space. His honorable mention. His honorable mentions. Consequences. Any Mike Gallagher story. Olympic Trials. Worlds Collide. Sonic Rush and The Chosen One. And of course his number one least favorite, Endgame. So, again, I will provide a link down below. Uh, so you guys can look at this, watch, read it. You can listen to what I have to say about it. And mix fan, I hope you take your time and watch this two-parter. I apologize for it being a two-parter, except the battery died on my camera, so there's really not much you can do when that happens. So, um, anyway, the link again will be provided in the description box. Take a look, guys. Read what he has to say. Maybe give your own opinions on it. Give your own opinions here on YouTube. Give your own opinions. Um, in the comment sections, give your own opinions in the comment, sec comment sections of the, uh, of, of, where this, of where the original topic is, if you've got an account with DeviantArt. Give your opinions and several of the Sonic uh, the Hitchhog Facebook pages, uh, comic book issues, Facebook page, just that you guys, you know, just give your opinions and that's really all
I'm going to say, and I will talk to you all later. Comment down below. God bless. Take care. And so I was in two parts.